and 100%. Kate Nightingale. That's it for 65. Take it away, boys. Thanks, Weege. And it is Robert Fitch grabbing the whole shot in senior 40 plus. The final moto, there are puddles everywhere. And Jeff Emick's got a good start on the 47. He is ahead of Mike Brown. I think Mike Brown likes these conditions, though. He's ready for it. He's eating it. Yeah, this is not good news. The number one right behind the number 47. We got a big pile up on screen. We're watching outside our window. Uh, only about five feet away before we can't see them through the darkness, but there is the number one. This is your championship battle. He is trying to make his way around Jeff Emig. Jeff Emig knows this is uh, got to put up the fight now. Keep Brownie behind me. Yeah, Robert Fitch is going to lead us into Storyland right now, so he's got at least clear vision in front of him, but I don't know if you can call this clear with the weather conditions the way it is right now as he kind of paddles his way out there. Emig is still ahead. Oh, no, Brownie down the inside oh. forces the issue and makes the pass. Look at these guys. Oh, my goodness, the puddles are so deep. Emig ripping a couple tear-offs just to get some clear vision there. Yeah, that's Chris Kiefer, I believe, on the number 33 just behind. Uh, Kiefer, a good start inside this mix. Going to just try to hang on to Brownie right now. Fitch trying to run away early. There's the number 11 coming around as well. That's Ben Riddle getting into the mix. And look at that. These guys, these are incredible riders here. Barely able to get over some of these jumps. Oh, look at oh, Brownie. Oh, look at the splash oh, there. Oh, Brownie. Brownie was trying to get to the outside there. Robert Fitch and Fitch held it on a little longer just to get to that inside. And he just absolutely plastered him with water as they came into the corner. So Brown has to settle back in a second. Emig still in third just ahead of Ben Riddle. So we're going to work our way through the middle part of this racetrack. Oh, look at them into the sand. Huge puddles on the inside. They're bouncing their way through. Robert Fitch is leading. Brownie, I think he got a little bit, you know, like let's, let's not get yeah. up and, and battle Fitch for a minute. Let's get some laps in and we'll figure this out and brad gebhardt up here with big mx radio just was talking to me that's that's crafty veteran riding right there that is hey i see somebody coming up on the outside i know i can splash him right now uh, and as this race goes on he's only got so many roll-offs so many tear-offs and look at the ruts riddle trying to make a pass here around emig yeah all the guys were doubling the triple after the finish line jump and riddle went and uncorked the triple his seat bounced up it and it looks like it's going to afford him a pass on jeff emig as these guys continue to just slosh their way over the tunnel jump. So our leader is now Mike Brown. Mike Brown has taken the lead through the mechanics area. He's gotten around Robert Fitch as we work through our first couple of corners. Fitch still second. Ben Riddle on the 11 ride trying to get up there and start battling with the 96 of Robert Fitch. You can see so many different lines, but they are all full of water. Absolutely, yeah. No, uh, even if it wasn't the veteran crafty riding, pretty much you're hitting puddles no matter where you go right now as Brownie. Yeah, Brownie Making taking his, his way through. Commandments. Robert Fitch not done yet, though. He is right back on the one machine. Try not to land in those puddles. You don't want to get too much of that water sucked up into those radiators as Brownie oh, just lays it into that inside, and they're just kicking water around everywhere. And it uh, looks like Riddle got her way through there pretty clean. Brownie going to take us back into Storyland. It is Chris Kiefer in fifth, Shane Kelleher sixth with Christopher Hunter in seventh, uh, John Boroff in eighth with Scott Metz in ninth, and Donald Letty rounding out our top ten as we run. Uh, Riddle's and, coming to the front. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, he wants a piece of Mike Brown, and he might just get it right now. Look at that Ben Riddle making a pass on Mike Brown. Mud, the great equalizer out here at Loretta's. Absolutely. Ben Riddle shot down that inside, made that pass on Mike Brown, and he is our new race leader. No stranger to championships here is Ben Riddle, a five-time Loretta Lynn's championship uh, out of Campbellville, Kentucky right there. So he is our new race leader, trying to stretch this thing out. He's got already a few seconds in hand. I think Brownie wasn't quite sure what the heck has happened to him, so now he's trying to just regroup. Oh my goodness, look at Riddle go through that inside rut. There was so much water he's shoving aside. But uh, yeah, open up that gap a little bit. Brownie there in second. The line right there in third. That is Jeff Emig. So Jeff Emig moving up. He is also put right. Oh no! Oh, problems oh, for Riddle. For ben Riddle, he is stuck. I don't know if the bike expired or if he is actually stuck. But chain is, is off the bike. Yep, you can see the chain sitting. Wow, look at that. It, there's nothing he can wow. do with that. Absolutely heartbreaking. Oh, 
You hate to see that right there. He had just made his way all the way to the lead, and now he's just going to leave the bike standing on the there. inside line right there. Just said, you know what? I'm walking off. I'm all done. Hopefully no one gets stuck up behind that machine. Uh, but, man, that's unfortunate. Ben Riddle, he was on the move. Uh, ben Riddle's a, a strong guy. I know if he could pull that Kawasaki out, he would have. But uh, for right now, that thing is sitting stationary as uh, the battle is on behind that. So Mike Brown regains the lead with Jeff Mimic not far behind, sitting in second. Shane Kelleher rounds out the top three. And Chris Kiefer now moves up into the fourth place spot. Yeah, and Shane Kelleher was our fastest rider on the track last time by on that Honda, the number 88 machine. Now up into third place, a 236 flat last time by so there's brown going down our back straight away out of the first couple of corners emig there in second we'll see if we get a flash look at the 88 of kelleher in the background as he's trying to close up on our leaders well jeff emig you know he's regrouped as well he is not letting mike brown go this is the closest we've seen him in terms of pace this moto absolutely yeah brown is uh doing exactly what he needs to do, riding smart, not taking any more risks than he has to. But for Jeff Emig, this is a great ride for him. You see him carefully, methodically making his way through. The patience that these guys have to single, single, single before they decide to go for a double, uh, it, that's what's going to pay off in the long end. Not rushing to try to make up time, just slowly but surely ticking off a second here, a second there. No question about it. It looks like uh, Chris Kiefer on the 33 ride is actually taking over third place. This is our battle for fourth between Shane Kelleher and I believe that might be Hunter on the 55 trying to sneak up the inside. He is just paddling his way through the corner. So Kelleher was able to go by, and now he is into the four position. Uh, so he dropped a position to Chris Kiefer, but, yeah, he is now still in fourth place right there. Yeah, Ben Riddle coming down the announcer's tower right in front of us. He is walking with his helmet off. He is not happy about that situation. He was riding so well. And that's a shame the way that his moto has come to an end right there. So Chris Kiefer and uh, the 55 of Christopher Hunter battling it out. Hunter trying to get down the inside, but Kiefer paddling. Oh, man, buries it in. So Chris Kiefer out of Hesperia, California, using the outside line right here. Chris Hunter on the inside out of Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. Two polar opposites of the country here battling in the mud at Loretta's. And here we go. The battle's continuing on through the middle of the racetrack. There is Kiefer, and there goes Chris Hunter. So Pennsylvania native versus California native. We don't have, have a much rain out in California, so Chris Kiefer not necessarily accustomed to racing in the mud, but doing a pretty good job right now holding on to third. Maybe trying to teach his son Aiden a little bit of lessons because Aiden definitely struggled in some of the races we've had since we started falling. But Chris is on the move right now. So Chris Kiefer across the line, still in third place. You got Jeff Emig uh, checked in as our leader. Uh, Mike Brown is off the track. Mike Brown is pushing his bike just below our announcer's tower right here. So Mike Brown out of this moto, he is also pushing his bike. This I'm is, not sure what's happened to the one machine, but he's just below us here in the announcer I was pushing his bike. I was looking over. There was a KTM sitting just off of the Ten Commandments, and it was the number one machine. I couldn't quite tell. This is incredible. A huge shakeup in this event. Mike Brown was coming in with a 1-1 score, and he had bad luck in his other class, so a heartbreaker for Mike. But look at this. Jeff Emig right now taking over the number one spot. The number 47, this is, I'm sure Emic saw that. He says, hey, I got to keep this thing in survival mode. Take care of this husky underneath me and bring this thing home. Well, Emic, he threw the goggles off. So now if he gets past, he's not going to have anything to protect his vision as coming up behind him, Shane Kelleher on the 88 Yamaha is starting to mix it up. Kelleher went 23-4, so he hasn't even been on the podium this week. Now he's trying to go after a moto win in this final senior 40-plus uh, class moto right here. This is changing everything up and suddenly Jeff Emig in position to win this championship. This is crazy. Chris Kiefer might just do it. He could beat Mike Brown in the overall grab. It's second overall in the championship. I know he is stoked right now. And uh, these guys all, the plan right now, hey, try to stay out of the deep water. Stay out of getting uh, dirt covering the radiators. Let's just bring this thing home. You see the smoke coming off of the Husky. It is brutal for both man and machine out here. We're seeing another motorcycle being pushed by a rider off the side of the track just outside the tower. 
they're dropping like flies out here. Yep. I'm watching this walk of shame. I'm watching Ben Riddle with the chain came off. You were leading, and Mike Brown with the title, his bike being pushed off. Riddle and Brown are walking back to the pits without their motorcycles together. A moto win for Riddle goes away, and a title for Brown goes away. That's unbelievable drama, and you know these are two guys that know how to handle these conditions. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. Absolutely, Weege, and you can tell the frustration is written all over their body language as they walk back to the pits in frustration. But hey, we have a tremendous battle for the lead going on. Shane Kelleher is all over Jeff Emig for the race lead. As we're coming down, white flag is waving. Emig and Shane Kelleher going to battle it out for this win. Nothing between them. Chris Kiefer is still holding on to the third spot, so he's just kind of biding his time back there. Maybe they get together and we'll see what happens. But this battle is still going on. This is this is going to be absolutely wild all the way down to the flag. There's a 25 machine going down the straightaway right there. And that appears to be uh, Robin uh, Niss on the 25 Husqvarna. He's in 24th. As we're looking for our leaders, there they are. There's Jeff Emig and Shane Keller. Look at Kelleher. Feet off the pegs, hanging it out as he splashes through the puddles. Emig also through those deep puddles. Oh, man, this is going to be a great battle to the flag. You know, they say you, you wave Jack Daniels in front of some of these plus 40 riders. He sees the Jack Daniels on the back of Jeff Emig, and he's like, I think I want to get up to that and get around it. Maybe have some Jack Daniels waiting on him up at the podium. If he's able to bring this thing home after a race like this, look yeah. at Emig has ditched the goggles now and just, just nursing his way around. Emig known for the smooth style, taking his time. And these guys are still moving. Emig knows the Kellers there. They both were in the 30s last time by 237 for Jeff Emig, 234 for Shane Keller. Everybody else, 249, 259, well down uh, that order with the times that last time by. So they opened up 19 seconds on Chris Kiefer, who is still in third place there on the 33 Yamaha. But Emig, he's just trying to survive right now. He's splashing through these puddles. He's got one foot off the inside peg just to plant his foot in case he gets a little bit sloshed around awkwardly or something like that, making sure that he keeps it on two wheels. And again, one foot off the inside right there as he's going to take us down this back straightaway, able to still leap up on top of that uh, tabletop jump and use the advantage of leaning back on the machine to get all the way through that sand section. Unbelievable. We saw the, the younger riders, they go and throw both legs off. These vet riders, they're able to hold just the one leg off just in case. And uh, it looks like the camera operators, uh, a couple of media riders, Getting the, getting the photos, having to use the flash as dark as it is out here. And uh, they're wanting to get the shot. Jeff Emig, as he makes his way around the Thor Sand Sweeper for the final time, the flash bulbs are ready. We're getting excited here. Emig is, is still not out of the water just yet. And I think that's Kelleher down the inside that just took the lead away from Jeff Emig. Emig got splashed in the face. He had to wipe his hands. And he's looking up like, what just happened? You just gave the lead up. Shane Kelleher through the final turn, I think he's going to cross the line with the win. And he does. Shane wow. Kelleher takes the win in this moto. But Jeff Emig is going to win this championship as he crosses the line. He'll go 2-2-2 two, two, two to win the title. Look at the 27 machine. He's running the bike across the line. 96 of Robert Fitch. He was up there early on. He's also put people here, but they're getting completely soaked. Yeah, this is a... It's the smallest crowd Jeff Emig has ever celebrated a title in front of. Uh, who do you want to thank, man? It's really been fun having you back. Uh, especially BJ Burns, uh, MX University. Look, he's standing out there in the rain. He loves it. We were, we were on the line, and we're like, hey, you have to embrace the suck. Like, we, we choose to be here. This is what we do as motocross riders, and we choose to do this. And if you tried to explain it to anybody else, I don't think you could. Like, why are you here? But, um, of course, um, ODI Grips. Rhino Power, oh, no, let me look at my visor, Elevate, um, MX Locker, Viral Goggles, We Big Gear, Jack Daniels gonna, Gear going to be available uh, sometime soon, my girlfriend Jessica for being here, and my son Jagger, there he is, first time he's been here when I race, so, uh, so much fun, uh, a lot of people back me on the bike, like Twisted Development, FMF, Enzo, Henson, Asterix, I don't know, it, it's M muddy at this point. But. Hey, MX Filter Service. Hoodie, I got some filters for you. Coming back. All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. Jeff Emming is your champ. Congratulations. Get it done in the mud. And uh, I, one last thing. You got it. And some champagne for you as well. This is a guy who actually knows how to pop that. Shake that whenever you want. They're already wet anyway. And um, I'm going to go hide under these tents. Take it away, boys.